Hi, my name is Brian Dalton. I am the head of magnet operations. I run the uh, control room and resistive magnet program. We supply electricity, water, compressed air, and other uh, services to the users in the magnet cells and to the rest facility for uh, whatever else that they need to use it for. And we use these computers to operate, to monitor all the equipment you see out in the plant, the magnets, the magnet power supplies. Using these computers we can use one to two operators to do the job of about four or five people because with one click of the button I can turn a valve on 100 feet away and then with another click I can turn a pump on that might be 200 feet further away. Now in the control room we supply our magnets with uh, up to 720 volt DC power. DC meaning direct current, electricity flows in one direction. If we used AC power on our magnets, which you would have coming out of your wall, the poles on the magnet would be flip-flopping 60 times a second. And that really would not provide the stable field that the users need to do the research. Now we use about $7 million of electricity annually. The city has got a 100 megawatt substation. We draw our power from that substation into a series of transformers. They step the power down from 12,500 volts to 720 volts and supply that to our power supplies upstairs where that turns that power from AC power to DC power. The magnets themselves use about 20 to 30 megawatts of electricity for each magnet. We can run up to two resistive magnets at a time. Um, now when we run the hybrid, that's a 33 megawatt magnet, so we can only run that by itself. What's a megawatt? A megawatt is a unit of power. It's enough electricity to heat and cool about 600 homes for a year. So that's quite a lot of power that we're supplying to our magnets all the energy I put into the magnet turns into heat. And if I don't remove that heat from the magnet, well, I'm going to have a big molten copper slag at the bottom of the magnet housing. Now, as you notice when looking in the resistive magnet shop, you'll see that those magnets have all these little holes in them. Well, that's where the water flows through the magnet, and we're pumping about 2,000 gallons a minute through each magnet. How can you put water in the magnets when you've got all the electricity running through them? Doesn't that short out the magnet? It's actually the impurities in the water that conduct the electricity. And we have a system out in the plant that removes all the impurities and cleans our water up so that we can actually run it through electrical coils and not short it out. Now the water goes into the magnet about 42 degrees Fahrenheit and can come out about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have about a 98 degree temperature rise over a distance maybe two feet tall. That is a lot of energy we have to get rid of. Now that water goes out into the plant and goes to a heat exchanger where it gives that energy up, that thermal energy, over to the chilled water system. Chillers remove the heat from the chilled water system and move it over to our condenser water system which puts it out into the cooling tower. And the cooling tower cools the water by evaporation. We do our part to make Florida hotter and more humid. We'll open the door to the plant. And you can hear all the noise from the pumps and the chillers and you can see that it's a rather loud, loud facility that we use. So we have these two chill water storage tanks here out back. Those are like thermal shock absorbers. I store about 4 million gallons of 42 degree Fahrenheit water in those tanks, equivalent to about six to seven Olympic sized swimming pools. It gives me a very good, very fast means of removing heat from those magnets.